Hello, today is this Range XTD device. It's a wireless range extender, but also has routing mode and some other things, so you might otherwise call it a travel router. Uh, I've done another video on a USB version of one of these, and it wasn't very good, and I don't have high hopes for this one. So, Range XTD uh, claims it improves wireless coverage in WLAN networks. Uh, up to 300 megabits per second, which means that the real-world throughput will be somewhere probably between 80 and maybe 150 megabits per second. Uh, two by, uh, well no, just two antennas, um, but probably not two streams. And only provides 100 megabits per second Ethernet ports. And what else? Supports US through to EU mains voltages. Weirdly, seems to say that it'll only, uh, I see maybe forwarding is in its routing mode. It only does IPv4, so it doesn't do IPv6 networks. So inside the box, we've got a manual. And I've seen this web interface before, I think on that other one, and also on another really bad wireless repeater that I've seen as well. Uh, changing the plugs. So, yeah, it comes with UK plug and EU plug. Presumably there's also a US version as well. In fact, it says yes, US and EU plug, so um, there must be a version that comes with, yeah, one US plug pre-installed. Well, oh yeah, there we go. US plug, EU plug, and a UK plug, and in fact that's everything that's in the box. And a network cable. Network cable, surprisingly, has all eight wires in it. So that can do a gigabit if it was plugged into something which uh, was gigabit capable. Actually, a surprisingly comprehensive manual. Normally these things uh, have half a page of stuff in one language and then uh, the rest of it is in uh, all the other languages. Okay, does it have the default IP address? Probably does, but I can't see it just immediately on that page. Yes, there we go, 192.168.7.234 is its default IP, which is good to know. And already uh, has the factory reset instructions as well if you needed to. To restore factory settings, hold, uh, press and hold the reset pinhole button for three seconds or until the indicator lights turn off. Okay, let's get rid of that uh, plastic cover and see what we have. Smart looking device, which probably does not relate to its actual performance. A WPS button, reset button on the uh, right hand side. The default IP address and username and password are printed on the label. And some switches on the side. So you've got on and off. You've got repeater mode in the middle. Access point mode in the uh, on the left. And router mode on the right. A WAN LAN port and also a LAN port on the underside. Again, those only do 100 megabits per second. So, that should have been pre-installed. That's the uh, US plug, and you have to press that tab to remove it. Got the EU plug, it doesn't seem to stay stuck like the US one did. No, no, let's see. Oh, I see. No, the US one doesn't stay stuck. 
So there's a little plastic tab that's supposed to keep this in place. So if that's plugged in at the wall, they can't just fall out. Um, that one's not too bad. So say if that was plugged in at the wall, and then a child or somebody came along and twisted it, and it fell off the wall. It's not too bad for that. You can't easily get your fingers into that one. US one. That is seriously easily accessible. And uh, at least in the US you've got 110 volts rather than 240, but they'd still get a, uh, a wallop. And the UK, so I mean I can't twist that on anymore. So that should be locked in place. Oh, yeah, wow, well, that's, that's awful. Um, and that is even more accessible, probably. Yes, it, it is. I'd say there's uh, less depth on um, on the UK plug than all the others. So 240 volts. I mean, this is a... I don't... Let me switch that off at the wall. So that's plugged in. That, that, I mean, that's an awful design. And I mean, I don't even want to touch it, even though I know it's switched off at the wall, but you could so easily touch those. So, I mean, if you've ordered one of those and you're in the UK and this is as easily removable as it is, send it back. And probably also contact trading standards, because I'm sure that can't be legal in this country. Anyway, let's attempt to use it. So let's do uh, which way round? Do you need it so you can see it that way round? That's awful. Um, how's that a thing? Right, I'm going to hope that stays in. Turn the power on and see whether sparks fly. So the way that's flashing reminds me very much of the Agatol wireless travel repeater, which I did a video on back in 2019, um, with these very rapidly flashing lights. The next thing I need to do is get a laptop and join it to this Wi-Fi network and um, see what the web interface looks like. Uh, I think it's going to be very much like the USB video that I've done, but let's just see. That is the worst design. Grim. Anyway, the next thing you will see will be me using a laptop. So here we are, I am now connected directly to a main router, as an example, connected to my network, which um, is on a gigabit ethernet network, which on wireless you'll never achieve um, a gigabit unless you have Wi-Fi 6 stuff and a very modern computer to connect with. So the wireless equipment that I have in the house at the moment is able to achieve, it looks like mid 200s megabits per second. And 137 megabits per second down. Let's do that a couple more times. also shows the variableness of Wi-Fi, uh, where you can run three tests in a row, get 250, 200, and then 236. There's nobody else connected to this wireless access point, it is just this laptop. So we're about consistent on the upload, uh, but 236, so 250, 201, and 236 on the download. So now let's uh, connect to the 
range XTD and configure it to repeat that network. So let's go to the web interface of the repeater, D34. It seems to have a very slow web interface. And the picture of the device itself does not look like the device, but anyway, let's go through the setup wizard. I think we just click on where it says repeater mode. Hopefully it will see the network that I'm testing with. And let's see what the lights on the device do. So it's logged me out of the web interface, but none of the lights on the Range XTD seem to have changed. And I appear to still be connected to the original SSID or the name of the network. It hasn't changed to the one where it had on the web interface saying that it would be dash RPT for the repeated version. So it does make me wonder whether that's failed. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it didn't seem to apply that. Let's try that again. That's definitely the correct details, that's one I'm connecting with on the laptop. This time it actually seems to have done something, the uh, repeater itself has rebooted, so I'm not sure what happened that first time. And the lights have now gone solid, showing that it's got three out of, uh, sorry, two out of three bars reception. Let's see um, how quick it will work through this repeater. So bearing in mind, previously we got 200 to 250 megabits per second down, and uh, the laptop is only a few centimetres away from where this repeater is. So it'll be interesting to see what speed we get through the repeater. Um, although it doesn't fill me with confidence that it just went into its weird flashing mode again, but uh, let's see. So I've got the Vodafone extended version, fill in the password still waiting for it to connect and there we go, the laptop is now connected so I expect I should get internet So Google loads. Let's try a speed test. So I'm going to uh, load another tab so we can just refer to the previous speed test and see what the uh, result comparison is. The way that speed test hasn't even started is not a good sign. Hmm. Refresh that a couple of times. Try again. Oh, there we go. Right, managing it this time. So, 10 times slower. I'm going to say that unless your internet is slower than about 30 megabits per second, you never want to use one of these in your network, let alone because the safety issues like this. 
Ah, oh, live 240 volt terminals. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you have bought one of these, send it back. If they don't want to take it back and give you a refund, speak to trading standards about it because the performance out of this is subpar anyway and the safety implications are awful. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.